Welcome everyone to the Virtual Excel Academy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. We're with you too. Hello everyone. Today we have a special adventure. We are going to write our very own quarantine book, ebook. And Bev Sherritt from Patents Project is going to be joining us. She has asked that if you have a phone, a tablet, a laptop, or a computer, please have it handy. So if you need to take a moment to get some equipment, we are hoping that you'll be able to go along on this adventure with us by grabbing your things. And also she might be using Google Slides. So if that is something you also have handy, that would be great. If you don't, don't worry, we'll give you some alternatives. A couple of announcements before we get started. We are looking for photographs. Do you see this young man here with his hands on his keyboard with a nice little smile and headphones on his ears? We would like a picture of you doing something similar. Maybe it's in the kitchen. Maybe it's at your desk. Maybe it's on your phone. Maybe it's even in your garden. Whatever it is, we would love to have a picture of you. Are you able to share that with us? And if so, you can email it to Leanne. And Leanne is going to put that in email address in the chat window for you all to grab when you get a chance. Google Slides is what we're gonna be using today. We have a question in the chat window. Google Slides is what we're using today. But we will have some alternatives. So if you have something else maybe at hand that's similar, we could also use that. The second announcement that I have is that this, uh, this session is primarily geared towards students. So we're gonna have a lot of opportunities for you to write in the chat window. That's the best way to communicate for us. And we really encourage all of our students to participate in the chat window. And those of you who are adults, maybe TVIs, we're gonna ask that you allow that space for our students to respond because we're gonna have so much interaction today that we're hoping for. And um, before we get started, let me just introduce our hosts. From Paths to Literacy, we have Charlotte Cushman. Hi everyone, welcome. We have Leanne Grillat from American Printing House for the Blind. Hello everyone. And most importantly for today, taking us on our ebook adventure, we have Bev Sherritt. Thank you, Bev, for joining us, and we look forward to this session. It's great to be here. I'm going to take a second and share my slides. I'll be going through the slides, and I'll let you know what is on each one. I'm so glad to be here today and to meet all of you. I'm sorry for the circumstances. But what a joy to be able to meet a lot of students and teachers along the way. So we're going to write our own quarantine adventure, at least get started on it today. And I'm hoping, I was talking to the other hosts, uh, that some of you will be able to share the stories that you're writing. We all have important stories to tell. And this is a unique time that should be recorded. It's a big time in history. Maybe you've heard your grandparents talk about going through some tough times uh, through a war or a difficult uh, time financially. And here's your opportunity to write down how you're getting through this tough time. It's really helpful to tell your own story. So I'm gonna start by uh, giving a brief story of how I got to the job that I'm doing today. And I'm using a tool called Explain Everything. It's an app that's available on both platforms, major platforms. And you can see that there's some drawing going on and I'm narrating it as the drawing's going on. This is a drawing I made of myself holding a frog and a test tube. And I started out being a science teacher. Uh, before I became what I am now. And I, that P on my shirt that you just saw drawn is Purdue University. I graduated uh, with a teaching degree from Purdue University. But my first job was at the Indiana School for the Blind. And I began to learn Braille and got excited about teaching students with blindness and low vision. And I, I fell into the job I never knew I wanted, but, but it was the right job for me. And I was so happy that I made it there. I also became a mobility instructor, so you can see me holding a cane. And then now, I am a specialist for the state of Indiana. I, I taught 
students for 22 years and now I teach teachers about technology. Um, I'm excited to be back to teaching students today. So I'm teaching uh, you a little bit about some tools that you can use on your devices to help you be good writers. So that's my story. You can use Explain Everything too. And I have a link in the resource document. You'll be getting a document that's posted with the recording. And this tool is called Explain Everything. It is free for the first three videos you make. And what you do is you tell your story while you draw illustrations to go with it. Teachers can also use it to make short videos like to do a math problem and show how each step is written. Um, it's a great tool, explain everything. So there's so many ways to tell a story. Let me tell you um, my agenda for today. First, I'm gonna have you tell me who you are in the chat box. Then we're gonna talk about tools. Then we're gonna take a little break. And then we're gonna talk about how to build a story. Then we're gonna take another little break. I believe in breaks, especially when you're sitting and working on your device. It can really help your brain when you take a quick break and do something and move around. Then we're gonna look at some example slides from my quarantine story. And then we'll take final questions. I do work for the Patents Project, and what we do is we promote achievement through technology and instruction for all students in Indiana. Shout out to all you Indiana TVIs. So in the chat box, uh, could you tell me maybe your first name, tell me what grade you're in, and tell me where you're from? You have Gabby from New Mexico. You have Colin. Hannah, grade 11 from Utah. Cool. Ryan, 10th grade, Delaware. Hi, Ryan. Sophia is four. Oh, hi, Sophia. Welcome. Maya, fourth grade from North Carolina. Roman, second grade from Georgia. Charlie from Seattle. All right, wonderful. From sixth grade, St. Louis, someone from San Diego, San Jose. Keen is in college. Cool. So I live in Indiana and I live on a 220 acre farm here with my husband. And I'm quarantining with my daughter and son in law and our granddaughter, Maggie. And we also have two foster daughters who are teenagers. So it's amazingly quiet in the house right now with seven people, but I sort of told them, you know what, this is a big deal. You guys have to stay in your corner of the house. All right, so let's talk about the tools you can use to write a story. How many ways are there to write my story? And my answer is 4010. And you were like, well, 4010, that's not a real number, but I have a story that goes with the number 4010. When I was a kid growing up in a big family, we would ask how long until this or how many more miles on this trip. And my dad always used the answer 4010 uh, because he just was being silly. But in other words, there are so many ways to write, we can't count them all. And we want to find the way that works for you and give you the right tool. And fortunately, so many wonderful tools are out there for you. What I decided to use specifically um, to demonstrate is Google Slides. It's available on all platforms just by going into a browser. And many districts are using a Google platform, but it is not the only platform and the only tool to use. It's just a simple one and I thought it would be a good one to demo. I wish I had more time to teach you all every tool, but this is the one we're gonna learn today. The alternatives you could use in visual ways is PowerPoint. So if you're on a Windows machine, PowerPoint's the same as Google Slides, only a different platform. It actually has more things you can do that are fancy in your slides than Google Slides. There is also a book creator app called Book Creator, and it is made specifically to make your own ebook. So you could check that out in an app store. Also, I want to plug Tar Heel Reader. It's a wonderful platform if you are a student who uses AAC and needs switch access. 
So you need to tell your story too. Um, we we want to hear your story, and if you're using AAC, you can connect to Tar Heel Reader um, with switches so that you could use your device to tell your story. You could tell your story in an auditory way. We're going to look at a visual way, but auditory ways are wonderful. There are so many books out there that are on audio format. You could make your own audio book. Almost every phone uh, now, smartphone, I would say every smartphone, has a voice record on Apple devices. And this is what the icon looks like. It's built in, comes with your phone. A lot of people don't even notice it there. And then on uh, Android devices, it's called Recorder. So you could look for these apps on your phone. You also probably, through your photo or your camera feature, know how to shoot a video on your phone, or someone could help you make a video. So you could video your story, or you could voice it uh, using voice record. And both of these have features where you could maybe say part of your story and take a break and think over the next part and say another part of your story, just like you were writing it, where you might stop and start. So you could build a story using your voice. Um, so if you are doing a visual and using a keyboard to write, um, how many of you out there are pretty good at using a keyboard? Tell me in the chat. We're getting a lot of people who are good at this. Keen oh, and they're Anaya good. Naya and Jessica, okay. uh, Titus and Christo. Um, uh, Jessica, we have a couple of questions, Bev, while we have a pause here. Um, yeah. Do you know if Book Creator is accessible? You know, I should know that, but I don't. I have used it a couple of times, and I haven't tried it with VoiceOver. Um, or uh, I know you could, uh, with low vision, zoom into it, but I have not tried it with voiceover. Thank you for asking. I'm going to put that on my list of things to check out. And another question is, could you explain what AAC is, please? Oh, uh, AAC is Augmented um, Assisted Communication. Assisted Augmented Communication. I think I'm saying that right. Um, that is where you may be a student and you're not able to use your voice. So you use a device, a uh, tablet maybe, or a talking device to touch a button and the device speaks for you. Um, so, or you may need it uh, if you have uh, a physical disability as well, you may use your vision to point with your um, eyes at a word to speak. So going along with using that to communicate, you might also use it for writing a book because writing a book is a form of communication. Great question. Um, so if you're not a typer, I recommend Talking Typer from APH or the American Printing House for the Blind. And you can talk to your TBI about getting a copy of that downloaded to your computer. What a great time during this to maybe take some extra time and become a better keyboardist. And it I is noticed free. on the past. Oh yeah. No cost um, for talking typer. It's a great way to learn keyboarding. Also wanted to mention and a shout out to Paths to Literacy as I was looking at, uh, and preparing for this, I saw they have a typing club. So if you are a good keyboardist, you can join the club and, um, uh, do competitions with other people and how fast and how accurately you can type. So that link will be in your resources as well. All right, so let's talk about how to set accessibility for low vision. I looked for some good resources and I have four links, one for Windows accessibility, uh, one for Mac accessibility, one for Chromebooks, because I suppose there are all of you using different devices. Maybe some of you even use more than one device for different tasks, and also iPad accessibility. So if you need to look up specifics for how to set your font um, so that you can see it larger, or uh, if you'd like to have the screen speak to you, 
uh, in a number of different ways. Maybe if you have low vision, you only want to have part of, you don't want to have the uh, screen reader on, but you would like sometimes when your eyes are tired, you could highlight it and have the screen spoken to you. So there, again, are so many ways to have that done. I've given you that list to look for that. Also, a great tool is speech to text or dictation. And all, all of the platforms that I just linked to have a way for you to speak to your device and have the words keyed in for you through dictation. How many of you have used speech to text or dictation as a tool? Ryan says yes, Hannah says speech to text, Colin has. Okay, great. Keen uses dictation all the time. Okay, I use it too. I use it like if I want to do a text really quickly and I don't, I'm not a very good typist with my thumbs. I'm good at keyboarding on my laptop, but with my thumbs on my phone, I'm super slow. So I just use my voice and it's not, uh, the easiest thing to, you might think, oh, that sounds so easy just to say it. But um, if you're using it to write a story, there are certain steps that make it easier and make it so you get a lot better accuracy with what you want to say. Also, you, if you've used it a lot, you know you have to also speak the punctuation. Like if you're asking a question, you have to say, how long will this take, question mark, and then say that. And that takes a little getting used to, and it takes some time um, and practice and training. So I've put a couple of great resources in the slideshow, and it'll also be in the resource document on learning dictation. Um, and uh, for you teachers for the blind out there, these are great to take some time. But I really emphasize, if you get started and students get discouraged, encourage them to keep with it because it really just takes a lot of time and practice. All right, so those are the special tools that you can use. And now we're going to take a quick break, but we're um, gonna, I'm gonna get up a little bit and oh, you know what? I wanted to involve my dog, Marlon, and he's opened his eyes. He's asleep on the couch, but um, he's waking up. Can you see Marlon there? Most people do a better job even seeing if you can um, uh, stop sharing and be able to share. Oh, he's walking away though. So we have lost yep. our chance. Come here, Marlon. Marlon. Okay, I'll stop my share for a second. Oh, but I also wanted to show you this Jamboard link as a tool you can use to work with someone else on a story that might not be with you. So Jamboard is also on the Google platform and um, I'm gonna cl click on that. And I would love it if you could go there. Um, I'm gonna give you the link. Can I put that in the chat box? You can, make sure you're typing to all panelists and attendees to be able to do that. Okay, all panelists, here it comes. That was close. That was just to us. I'm going to type it and I'll oh, copy it over for I'm you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Awesome. My job. Okay. So if you click on that link, you can go to the same Jamboard. And I'm going to have you, you can use the tools on the left. There's a pen so you can write with your mouse or your trackpad. But down, there's also a sticky note. So if you want to put a sticky note and type something in, you can. So this is something we can all share together. But I was going to have my dog, Marlon. He loves bubbles. And um, I'm going to blow some bubbles for him and see if he'll um, perform for us. And I, I'm going to keep my screen share up and hope that we can see him. OK, Marlon, you're on. I didn't, I didn't coach him beforehand. Let's blow some bubbles. Hey, Marlon, come here. If you have control of your own screen, you can try to double click the small picture if it is small and it will make it large for you. Oh, what's Marla doing? Oh, 
And so she that I would love really it um, if you would write some words maybe to describe Marlin or describe the bubbles and, and Marlin, on my slideshow I put down salsa words try to use your best salsa words and what I mean by salsa words is um, if you want a snack you can go have a rice cake right I'm eating a lot of snacks during this time um, but I don't really want a rice cake, but I love chips and salsa. It's just spicier. Uh-oh, he's laying down again. So could you write some words to describe Marlin or the bubbles that are more like salsa words and not rice cake words? Let's see. Anybody going to put something on the jam board? Or if you want to just put it in the chat box, you can do that too. But I wanted to show you Jamboard. It's just like a whiteboard, but the one you can share online. Marlon, you're, are you out of the frame? We are hearing that Jamboard is having an issue with anyone who has a Chromebook. Oh, shoot. An issue with anyone what? Who has a Chromebook. Oh, no. We have a variety of people on lots of platforms, including a cell phone. Yes. And we have some phone call people. OK. All right. So anybody in the chat box? Oh, explain again. I just wanted you to write some words just to get us warmed up for writing to describe Marlin, the, my golden retriever, or the bubbles, or uh, Marlin chasing the bubbles. Any kind of words, adjectives, or feelings that come up. Joyful, that's nice. I like that. Bouncy, very nice. OK. Oh. People having trouble writing on it. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, I love seeing it in the chat box. He really loves bubbles. He does. And now he's awake. I'm going to see if he... Um, iPad. Okay. Hungry. Okay. Playful. Sparky. Ooh. Great salsa words, people. Thank you so much. All right. So back to the slides, we're going to, we're not going to talk about tools now, but we're just going to talk about building a story. And I would love to take some time to hear from you. Um, like I said, it's important to tell our stories and um, we're going to come up with a, a quarantine theme. And there are lots of ways you could write about your experience right now. Um, but I was going to put uh, just some tips for writing before we jump into ideas about the quarantine. The first one you see is rear in chair. And sometimes you um, think I should write about that. Um, and maybe you get to it and maybe you don't. But if you schedule a time to write and get your rear in the chair in front of the laptop, maybe you do it for 10 minutes every morning where you say, I'm just gonna write a little bit. I'm going to journal a little bit or work on a story. Scheduling that time um, can really help you to move forward. And sometimes what you write won't be your best, but if you do get your rear in the chair, you'll have something to start with. And uh, I guarantee you, if you do it every day, then you're going to get some good ideas and some good things down and you'll be able to put together a good story. You can keep an idea notebook. Uh, you can keep a journal. Um, you could also use Siri or Alexa to keep notes. I know I don't have an Alexa, but I know or, um, the home assistant that has Alexa on it. Um, she has a note taking. You can start a list with Alexa. And if you're thinking about something during the day and you don't have time to sit down at your keyboard, you can tell Alexa hey, add to my list about my quarantine story because I just thought of something. But also with Siri, you can say on your phone, hey Siri, remind me to write about and then put it in there what you're working on. So just like there are so many ways to uh, write a story, there are many ways to take notes and keep track of your thoughts. Would Google Home work? Sure, that would work. Um, Oh, and I hear already that you guys have written stories I, uh, or use Word, if, whatever you're comfortable with. But um, if you're out on the move, um, you may or may not have access to one device, but you might have access to another one. Um, sure, 
uh, you can make it up as you go along. Google Docs is great. I love it that you guys know so many tools. So let's talk about how I came up with, I think, oh, um, nine ideas on two slides for quarantine theme. And maybe you guys have ideas too. Here are some ideas I have for approaching your theme. Number one, how has the quarantine changed my life? Maybe you have had your life turned upside down by the whole quarantine. Um, number two, what have I learned during quarantine? Maybe because your parents are working a lot, you've had to learn how to make your own sandwich. And that's probably a good thing, right? Um, but it could be something else you learned. Number three, how have I gotten to know someone better during quarantine? Um, so I have gotten to know my granddaughter a lot better. She does live within a half hour's drive. So I used to see her about once a week, but now she's here every single day, all day. And she learned how to say grandma in the last few weeks. So that's pretty exciting that I got to know her during the time she learned how to say the word grandma. Number four, what are the things I miss the most during quarantine? Maybe you want to write about that. And on my new slide, I started the numbering again. But the fifth one is, what is my quarantine fantasy? Are you a writer that likes to think about things that could happen or maybe science fiction? Maybe you're a Harry Potter fan and you have a quarantine fantasy where you are able to magically go be with your friends without um, getting exposed to the virus. You could write about your fantasies and what you're imagining right now. Number six, a letter from quarantine. Oh, I see someone who loves Harry Potter, me too. A letter from quarantine. And maybe you do write your story as a letter to someone else. And wouldn't it be awesome for another person to get your story in the mail or in an email? You could write about your life before quarantine and think about, wow, I used to do this and now I'm not. Or your life after quarantine, think ahead and imagine, I wonder what if things will be different when I go back to school? What will that be like? What will it be like to be with my friends again? What about quarantine science? I started out as a science teacher. Maybe you would like to find out as much as you can about the virus and what they're doing to stop it and the science, uh, and you write about that. Those are ways you could write about the quarantine. What about you guys? What do you think you'd like to write about? Any of these ideas, or do you have ideas too? Oh, I see you miss your friends. Oh, music. That's interesting. Oh, Siri. Somebody's a Siri user. Good. Another music lover. That's great. Okay. Things you miss. Okay. Bev, we have uh, Keen is writing a story already about a busker who plays his guitar to raise money for coronavirus recession. Whoa, that Hannah's, is so creative. Hannah's writing about a girl who's experiencing what she's experiencing. Mm -hmm. Oh, so like from your own point of view, that's really, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of people who are already, already writing stories and books. Mm -hmm. Colin has written a story already. Oh, um, a quarantine song. Would love to hear a recording of that. That would be so cool. All right, so if you are able on your device, we're gonna just talk about how to put your ideas together on a slide. And I wanna tell you just a few things you could use in an ebook. You can use just words in an ebook. And once you make it electronic, then anybody can access it. That's what's so great about ebooks is if you write it electronically, then the person reading it can adjust it 
and make it large print or make it use it with a screen reader and access it. So that's what's wonderful about ebooks. Um, and then if you put a photo on it, which we're going to attempt next, um, you are um, adding visual interest. So let's talk about how to put a photo on a slide. And I'm going to go ahead and just go to this presentation is on Google Slides. So I'm going to put a photo on this slide. Whoops, I keep choosing the wrong button there. Not my first mistake today, for sure. Let's see if I can get back to my right tool. And okay. All right, so now you can see my slide and all my other slides on the left. And the way that you uh, put a photo on a slide is to choose the insert menu. And if you're navigating, the file menu is the first in the upper left, then the edit menu, then the view menu, and then the insert menu. So I already have text on my screen, but I want to insert and there are things you can choose when you click insert. And the things you can choose are image, and that's another word for a photo or a picture. Maybe you found one on the internet. You can also insert a text box, audio, and we're gonna talk about how to do audio. Video, so you can put your videos on there that you've created into your books. What a cool book that has a video in it. You can add shapes, tables, charts. Maybe if you're writing that science book, you wanna put some charts in there and you've created one, a diagram, a word art, and line. So let's just choose that top one. And I'm clicking on image. And there are ways to get it there. So you can upload from your computer, or if you follow the menu down, you can get a photo from Google Drive or Google Photos if you use that. You can insert a link to a photo if you found a photo on the web, or you can use your camera to take a photo and put it in. So I'm going to choose upload from my computer because I have some photos on here. And I told you I live on a farm. We raise specialty cut flowers here and we take them and sell them at farmer's market. So I'll put a photo, I'm gonna choose a flower photo and open and there it is on my screen so this is a dahlia from last year but it's covering up my words so you can see it has some uh control squares in the corner and if you click on one of the corners and pull it in whoops uh, you can shrink that photo down Another important button, if you click on it, is how you want your words to move around the photo. Oh, and also important, if you right click on the photo, you can choose alt text and that will make your photo accessible for people using a screen reader. So I'm going to describe what's in the photo so that if someone can't see it, they at least get a description of it. So I'm gonna put in there purple dahlia flower so they know what it is if they're using a screen reader. Um, all right, I'm not getting the buttons that I want to. Oh, come on. Usually below I get a button that will say text wrap and that'll make sure that my photo doesn't cover up my text. All right, I'm just gonna move the words for now. So how many of you have ever used a photo in Google Slides? Good, Hannah has. Are you guys uh, working on one right now? Have you started a slideshow? Thank you, Hannah. So you've done it once for a class. Yes, yes, good, okay. Did you know about the word wrap button? And I wish I could, it would show that. I'm not quite sure why it's not. 
Can anybody help me out? Usually when I click on the photo, I also get an option with a button. Oh, my son helped me. That's nice. I do that too. My foster daughters help me if there's something I can. I was trying to figure out a smart speaker and my foster daughter helped me. Hmm. All right. I'm not sure why that button's not coming on, but you can rearrange your words as well. All right, so I also want to show you how to put a recording on a slide. Google Slides just recently added this feature where you can put a sound recording on there. And I realized right now I was gonna use my phone and I don't have it right with me. So pardon me while I get my phone. And I wanted to show you how to use the recorder. I'm back. So I just have an iPhone and I'm going to open up my voice recorder. And let's see. It's opening up and pretty easy. It just has a record, a red record button at the bottom to get you started. Let's see if I can get that into the camera a little bit better. Just that red record button. So I'm going to do that. And it's asking me what kind of recording I want. Medium is good. Medium quality is fine. Okay, still warming up, so here we go. I am so excited to be in the Excel Academy today. And then I hit stop. And now all I have to do is say save to Google Drive. So on was that phone. on your computer that you're recording or were you recording in Google on your phone? Um, I was just using the utility that is called voice recorder that comes on every iPhone. Okay. And an option when you um, do it is save to Google Drive. So right now it's saving it to Google Drive. And so now when I go on my slides to insert a audio, I'm going to look in my drive and that should be showing up. It says, uh, okay. Oh, I may have sent it to the, a different Google Drive. All right, so um, I have two Google accounts and I think that sent it to the wrong one. But I have an, another sound file already in my Google Drive, which is Night Insects. And that reminds me, if you go on the internet and just search free sound files, you can go out there and find fun sound effects like Night Insects. Or if you want to add a, if you're writing a funny book and you want some funny sound effects like boing, boing, or, um, a whistle or something like that, you can go on the web and find free sound files just by Googling free sound files. There are a lot out there. So I'm going to use the one I have in here already, which is called Night Insects, and then click Select. And it's creating the audio, it's telling me. And then what you'll see on your slide is a little button at the bottom. And so whoever is reading your book will see the button or if they're accessing it via a screen reader, it'll tell them there's a button there. And I just touched it. Can you guys hear the insects? Yes. Sounds like summer. So you can put some in your books like that. So I know you've done pictures. Anybody else? Uh, Bev, ever put a sound in their book? Bev, are you using a voice memo? Is that what you're using on your phone? Let me check. Um, 
There is voice memo, but there's also voice record built into an iPhone. I think it depends on how new or old your, your iPhone is. So realize that there are free yeah, apps available, yeah. such as Voice Memo or Voice Recorder that you could download yes. that would do this. Absolutely. Totally no cost apps out there. All right, so that is my button down in the lower left. You can see that down there when I hover over it. So that's how to put a sound on a slide. And the third thing I wanted to demo. Your sound is really having a hard time right now, Bev. Okay, so at the moment, Bev has had a problem with her sound. We're having a hard time hearing her. So how many of you that started your book already think you might find a way to put some of your own voice in? The today voice of you that maybe 10 or 15 years from now, you will hear your today voice and realize maybe just how young you sound. So Sanaya is gonna give us a chance to do that. Nice job, that sounds good. Abby has an idea but hasn't started the book yet. Abby, what's the idea? Adithi, I think I said that right. You've started it. Okay, good job. Okay, now that you have the story, I saw a few people write what their story is about because they already had an idea for their story. What I want to ask about is if you didn't have your idea for your story, can you think of the sentence that would describe the story to you? Now, Let's see if you can come up with a sentence that's no longer than 20 words. Make sure it's a short sentence, but still tells me what the story is about. So writing about the life of a teenager in quarantine. Okay, what type of quarantine? Might need to get a little bit more descriptive about that. What else might you do? Do you have to do any thinking? You can write it in the chat. Bev, you're back. You've joined us. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Sorry about that. I wonder if that sound file really sucked up a lot of bandwidth there. I don't know what happened. I think it is. As you get going, I'll turn you back on. You feel free if you needed to share. Ooh, Hannah, a girl who has to save her family's restaurant by selling coloring books. That is a really good system sentence. I know exactly what the story's about. Makes me want to read it, but it's less than 20 words. That's what gets sticked on the back of your book to sell it. <laughs> Great idea. I like that. Ooh, from Gabby, my life in quarantine. Keen. I'm living in very lonely quarantine. Oh, yes. Quarantine mm -hmm. is very lonely, but that's an interesting story. So you're practicing your guitar. Great thing to write about. You ready, Miss Bev? I'm ready. Okay, go for it. Thanks for taking over there for me. And it sounds like I missed some juicy... Uh book uh, starts. We'll have to hear some more of those. So putting text on a slide, super easy. Each time you create a Google slide, you can uh, right click on it and choose a layout. And a layout will tell you how your text will look on the slide. So you can choose one that just has a title in the middle you can choose one that has a title at the top with lots of text underneath it. You can choose one with two columns or one column. You can uh, look around and find what really works for you. I really like one big title and some text underneath. And you can put pictures all over that too and sound files. So that's the way you add text to a slide. All right, so it's very simple to create an ebook. Uh, a slide, an ebook is really just a slideshow, and you could have 10 slides to tell your story, or you could have 200 slides to tell your story. There's no limit to that. Um, 
So let's hear some more in the chat box about what you're thinking for your stories. Sanaya said, the story will tell you how a ch girl's life changed with the diagnosis of a brain tumor. Whoa. Abby, my life as a blind flute player in a high school band. Interesting. Angel, wow. me and my sax in our quarantine. We do have a question. How do you come up with a good title? Ooh, you know, I don't have a slide about that, but that's a great question. I usually don't come up with the title of anything that I'm writing until I'm in the middle of it. And you may have one to start with and your story takes off and you start writing and then in the middle, maybe your story shifts to a new place you didn't think it would. So it might be best to come up with the title in the middle or at the end. What do you guys think? Well, Charlie said, my life about cane training. Ooh, I would love to read that story. And especially about how you're continuing your training during the quarantine. That would be cool. Are you practicing during the quarantine? There's my dog, huh? Me and my friends staying together in quarantine. Ooh, mm-hmm. Okay, well, once you have some thoughts down, you will want to edit your story, to go back and reread it and tweak your sentences and find maybe some better salsa words. Maybe you have a sentence and you think that's just kind of boring or it doesn't really say what I wanted to. And those are just rice cake words. And I really would like some salsa words in there. So editing, um, some tips for editing is to find a peer or an adult to read your story. Another great electronic tip is to use a speak command to have the machine read it to you. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you for how that looks on a MacBook, but there are ways to do it on all devices. And also, it's good to take some time away if you're writing, get your rear out of the chair and do some moving or take a, take a day off of writing and come back to it. I know that when I write and I come back to it, I see things that I don't see if I just look at it the same day that I wrote it. So taking some time away and coming back to your writing can help you to edit it. So now let's take another break. And are you guys, I just realized, are you seeing my screen? No, we are not. Oh boy. Okay, okay we had a few that. people asking us, well, <laughs> where do you publish your ebook? Ooh. Well, I told you about Tar Heel Reader, and if you have a book with short sentences, that is an online platform where you can share a book. Now, you'll want to be careful and not put any personal information in it, because if you put it out there on the internet with your personal information, that wouldn't be safe. Um, but that is a place if you just write a book that's fiction, not about you, um, or nonfiction, and you want to put it out there, Tar Hill Reader is a place to automatically pub publish your book. Um, if you started a blog, you could publish your book in the form of a blog. Um, you could print it or emboss it and share it with your friends that way. And then if you're very interested in publishing it professionally, then you would go to publishing websites and find out their process for submitting your work. You would want to make sure it's all really edited and spell checked and all of that before you send it to a publisher. But who knows, you could be the next big um, JK Rowling. You, you might be the one to be publishing that book. So, okay, I think I got my screen shared again. And, but let's take a break. Everybody stand up with me. And we're just gonna do a thing I call fish and snake. And then we're gonna sit down and do some more writing. So movement, like I said, super important. And it can help your brain a lot just by moving your body. It resets your brain and helps you think better to do those writing tasks. So it's called fish and snake. 
So with your left hand, I want you to make a fish motion, sort of waving up and down and moving forward, okay? There's your fish, everybody. It's kind of a cool dance move too, what do you think? You could do this on a dance floor. All right, uh, now stop with your left hand. Let's do the fish with our right hand. Good to do things with your left and then your right because your brain is made up of that left and right part and it helps your brain reset on both sides. So there's our fish with our right hand. Now let's do snake and snake is waving horizontally. So moving forward horizontally. Let's do it with our left hand first. There's our snake and let's stop with our left hand and do a snake with our right hand waving through the grass, back and forth, snake. Okay, now here's a challenge. Let's do fish with our left hand, ready? And fish with our right hand, both together. Same thing. Now let's do snake with our left hand, snake with our right hand, and now both together. Snake, 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 snake. All right, now here's the big challenge. Try doing fish with your left and snake with your right. Oh boy, I can feel my, my dendrites in my brain just totally doing a reset. Not too good at it. I look like I'm doing a kind of a crazy dance. Fun anyway. Okay. So now that we've done some moving, I would really, I'm gonna share a few examples. And as we do that, if you guys wanna share in the chat box some things you're coming up with your books, would love to hear them. So here are some pages that I came up with for my ebook. And like I said, I wanted to demonstrate the screen reader. If you turn it on in accessibility in a MacBook, and it's called ease of access is what you would want to go to in a uh, Windows computer. And you can find those in the links in the resource document. So I'm just gonna demo that. So what I'm gonna do is highlight, whoops, I'm gonna have to go back to the editing one. Okay, so my first example, I will have it read to you. Okay. And I just hit command comma. The quarantine has allowed me to spend a lot more time with my granddaughter, Maggie. She is almost two years old. She has learned how to say grandma while she has been living with us. Okay, so all I did was select it and then I hit on a Mac command comma. It might be different on a Chromebook or Windows. Just make sure you check out the resource document to find out how to do this. But any highlighted text that's on the screen, it can be read to you. And that is a great editing tool because you might use your vision or your, um, your screen reader um, as well to read what you have written to you. When you hear it, it's a little bit different than when you see it if you're checking it uh, on your braille display. So listening can be good for editing. I also have a photo of Maggie on there and I have an alt text description of that for a screen reader. You always wanna do that to make sure your book is accessible to everyone. Okay, example two, I will read myself. Uh, this is what I missed during quarantine. I decided to explore some of the topics and I'm not quite sure where my book's gonna go. Maybe it will have more than one topic in it. During this time, I really miss going to breakfast with my friends, Julianne and Mary on Wednesday mornings. We have a club, oh, you know what, I just found a mistake because I read it aloud. I had written, we have club. Oops, it should be we have a club called the Pie First Breakfast Club because we all love pie and we get together somewhere where they have pie for breakfast. I text them, but it's not the same as sitting and laughing with them while we eat pie and drink coffee. So um, that is, my second slide. What are you guys coming up with before I go to my third one? Okay. 
we had someone ask, how did you do that? Um, how did I do the screen reader? Is that what they wanted? Keen, you'll have to ask me a little bit more. Yes. Okay, so I'm on a Mac and I have an accessibility uh, speak highlighted text checked. So if I highlight something, I'm just going to highlight the first uh, sentence here. You can see on my screen and then I hit command comma. During this time, I really miss going to breakfast with my friends Julianne and Mary on Wednesday mornings. Okay, so the, the uh, keyboard shortcut is command comma, but you have to highlight some text. It'll work with anything on your screen that is in a text form. Thanks for asking, Keen. Okay. What else are you writing about? Or thinking about writing about? Someone's asking, what about Windows? If you're Windows, on a Windows computer. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, that's going to be in the resource document as well. I wish I had time to show every single platform. But on Windows, you can also have it speak selection. You just have to go to the ease of access um, in the Windows menu. And you'll have options for sound in there. And you would check the box that says speak selection. Great question. For you Windows users. And Hannah has said, I have written about things I won't be able to do that my character cannot do. Ooh, nice. And Keen writes, people go to a football match to watch Manchester United and Man City play when a pandemic is over. Oh, won't that be great when we can go back to sporting events? That will be so exciting. It, I'm glad you mentioned that, Keen. You can um, really process what you're missing and really build up an anticipation for that time when we can get back together. That's so cool. All right, and then my third example I'll share with you. Um, I get anxious sometimes when I think about the future. And sometimes I get excited, like you too, Keen, when I think about what I'll get to do again. But sometimes I get anxious. And I think a great thing about sharing our story, we can process those hard emotions sometimes, our anxiety, our sadness and missing folks, our anger sometimes when we're hearing somebody crunch their crackers or their chips across the room because for some reason during this time, it just seems louder than usual. Um, so I get anxious sometimes when I think about the future. I wish I knew when things will get back to normal and I can travel back to schools and see teachers and students in person again. So that those are some examples of things from my ebook. I thought I would also demo using the camera on this one and take a picture of myself looking anxious. So let me demo that. I'm gonna do insert again and image. And this time I'm gonna click on camera so there's my camera that came up. Let's see if I can make a really good anxious face, if I can do it and take the picture. <laughs> okay, so there's my picture and I can see a little preview of it. That looks, looks pretty, pretty anxious to me, so I'm just gonna insert that. So that's how easy it is just to take a quick picture to, of yourself to put in your book. There I am looking anxious. But I could also do another page where I look excited about soccer coming back. You could do a whole book of emotions for your quarantine. If I'm reading this correctly, Austin is going to write about superheroes. Titus is going to write about Christian guitar songs. Christo about sports players during the season and Matthew about major league, major Lego buildings. Hmm. Wow. So many, so like I said, how do you write a story? There's 40, 10 ways. There's as many ways as there are people. I'm so excited. I hope you can share your stories. And I don't know if we have time for questions, but that's all I have. If you can stop sharing your screen, we'll let them know what's coming tomorrow and then we'll answer any questions afterward. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. You know, we really are in an unprecedented time. 
And um, we at our house started a journal and I hadn't looked at it in a while because it's been a couple weeks since we've actually entered into it. But I went back to the very first entry and I thought I would share it with you. It almost brings tears to my eyes when I go back and I read it. Mm. Today they announced schools will be closed starting Monday. What are the kids and families going to do without school? I guess I will be homeschooling Amaya. For those of you who don't know, Amaya is my daughter. She's been with us a couple of times. I wonder what are the kids who are visually impaired gonna do? All kids, all kids are going to miss being with their friends. And I bet they will want a place to connect with each other. Tomorrow is Amaya's last day of kindergarten. Mm. Today is Friday, the day the world changed. I dropped off Amaya at school for the last day of kindergarten. What a strange world of unknown we are entering into. She is as happy as could be. I wonder if she knows that schools will be closed and what that means. I made a bunch of phone calls today to see if we can launch a nationwide effort to bring services to kids. Amazingly, people were jumping up to serve. Charlotte from Perkins and Texas Schools for the Blind started a webpage for it. And she's gonna enlist a bunch of volunteers to teach. And Leanne from APH said she would get the webinar set up on Zoom. It's amazing to see such incredible support and fast action. And I just have to reflect on that because I haven't read that. And um, it's just amazing. All of you who are out there, we have over 2,000 registrants who are, who are interested in Virtual Excel Academy. There are days when we have over 300 people here. Today, we had over 150. We are so glad to be with you, and we're so glad to have this place where you can connect. And when I see your names, a few of you who I see almost every day, it really brings joy to my face and it makes me smile. So thank you for your support and thank you for being with us. For tomorrow, we have another returning presenter. Adam Wilton will be with us and he's gonna do a second day of uh, Stories on the Light Box. So those of you who have seen that, it was a wonderful presentation. It's been very popular in our archives and we invite you to be back with us tomorrow. Bev, thank you again so much for being with us today and encouraging us to go and write our journals. And I encourage you all to go and do that. It's such a wonderful place to be able to share all of what's going on. Look at that, I have a tear. You're making me tear <laughs> too. Well, I know a lot of you had questions we didn't get to. So maybe we'll stop the recording and if Bev can stay on for a few minutes,